Yeah. So yeah. My guys are not doing anything at the moment in the middle. Can we just, are we going to push them in in the middle? Yeah. yeah. In the middle of the battlefield, the team have waited so long to attack that the Persians are picking off the hoplites with missiles as they slowly advance. The team must get these troops moving quickly to have any chance of this battle going to plan. They started their cavalry off a long time before they started their infantry off. That's a problem because the infantry are a lot slower than the cavalry. So that means that the cavalry hit unsupported by the infantry. And now the infantry are going to hit unsupported by the cavalry. And this is what the Macedonians are great at. They're great at grinding away. We've got the main infantry lines joining combat now in the center of the battlefield. At last, the team's pike phalanx start to engage. These Macedonian pikemen excel in close combat, but they are vastly outnumbered. There's a lot more blue than red on this map. <laughs> Guys, you need to pull together, I think. You're being completely slaughtered now. This doesn't look good, does it? This doesn't look good. Apparently it doesn't look good, Nigel. No, That's no, the word I can see generals. that. I can see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry that comes as a shock. <laughs> not a shock at all. Well, it's certainly not looking as good as when they formulated their plan, that's for sure. But keep in mind that a lot of the Persians, look at that. Look at that large number of Persians legging in. Some of the rickety Persian conscripts are so terrified by the advancing phalanx that they turn and run. But as the pikemen push forward, slaughtering enemy troops all along the front line, they still face massive numbers of Persians. Johnny, how do you think we're actually... Have you got any kind of casualty counts here? Because it looks awful on the map, but then again, the blocks of their troops keep running off. Well, there's a, there is a, a, a Macedonian breakthrough. That's right, they've broken through. Here we've got some Persians who are trying to get away, and they're, they're failing because they've come up against some Macedonian pike. The enemy cavalry are routing. That's good. John has almost won his fight on the right. He has decimated the Persian heavy cavalry, a troop vital to Persian success. But there are still masses of Persian troops alive and kicking on the left. This is a critical stage in the battle. What the team do next could decide the outcome. Johnny's side looks good. You've got a lot of red still there, but there's nothing on the left now. We are engaged on this side. My troops are engaged, OK, mostly. On the other side, though, of the battlefield, we do have a heck of a lot of them. That's why we need to get them all together and just go like that. It's interesting the degree to which the two lieutenants, I think, are really in control of the way this is being fought. The danger of this democratic approach to military command is that while the lieutenants chat about what to do next, their army remains outnumbered. Any delay could give the Persians a chance to regroup. What's Nigel's plan? You're talking about getting... I say to get all of our troops over on the right and just yeah. move Okay, so you need to come up to us. Yeah. Join, join. You come yeah, into our battle and then we can sweep down. Yeah. Get everyone together in a block? Is that what you want to do? Or? Yeah, I want to try and get these, these troops to pull back here and so, because we, we expect there's going to be a sort of final attack from this side. The team's are in pretty good shape. Because look, here we have the team have got formed unit, formed unit, formed unit, formed unit. If they can consolidate, and start doing a bit of good roughy tufty fix and strike against the Persians over here. Swing them around, swing them around. That but way. Nigel's remaining pikemen are so deeply embroiled in combat that they cannot disengage. So John orders his troops on the right to regroup and go to Nigel's aid. It's now a race against time. Nigel needs backup quickly if he's to avoid being wiped out completely. The team have got to hold their cohesion, they've got to concentrate their remaining combat power and they've got to give the Persians a really good kicking in hopes that some of the low-grade Persian troops will just leave the field. You've got two big blocks of troops yeah. on the right-hand side. You've got to wheel them around to the left to go and support Nigel. That's what we're doing. Hurry You're going right off the oh, we're coming! Right the Hurry up. Basically, if we charge, we lose formation. OK, if oh, we run, we lose formation. So we have to march them. The friends have been bickering for so long that Nigel is now in dire straits. John's insistence on holding formation means that his hoplites might get there too late. Nige, okay. you, you're, I think you're being attacked by archers, so you might want to Am I? see whether you can change your formation to disperse the men a bit. Nigel's wall of steel has taken a good panel beating. But on the right, a unit that John could be sending to Nigel's aid is fully committed to what might be the most critical engagement of the battle. Johnny, you've got one group, one with a, with a horse in it that's attacking you. That's yeah, standing absolutely still doing nothing. Okay. We can't move them. 
They are tied up. They are tied up. Oh, are they? Fighting a general, and I cannot move them. We tried. They're tied up fighting a general? Yes. Oh, well, that sounds good. It's one enemy general who has a weapon against a whole bunch of javelin men without weapons. It's not just any old general. It's the Persian leader, Darius. Well, our only hope is basically to, to get their generals. And John's troops are only too happy to oblige. The team have killed the Persian King of Kings. Both Darius and Alexander the Great are now dead. But while the professional Macedonians fight on, will the reluctant Persian conscripts stick around to fight without their leader? The team now get on with laying into the remaining Persians on the left. We're wheeling round to face the uh, rather large, rather large forces that are coming towards they, us. When you, when you go at them, they seem to kind of... Yeah, yeah, they don't like us. They don't like it up them. John orders his troops to engage the remaining Persian forces. But with King Darius dead, these Persian levies are increasingly unwilling to fight. They're, okay, they're, they're running fainting. away. They're going away from us. They don't want to face us. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying engage, engage a lot. They're now running past you. Yeah, yeah but we can't. We can't them. engage them. They're fleeing. The Persians are really starting to leave the field in larger numbers. Yeah, there's a great mob. I suppose it would be tens of thousands of panic-stricken Persian levies who really want to do nothing other than save their lives at this point and run as fast and as far as they can. Proportionally, I mean, remember what you were faced with right yeah. at the start of the battle, but it's not won, so what are you going well, to do to secure victory? Well, we actually, I, it's bizarre, we seem to be doing okay. And we need to work could out you, where... Could you tell us where the enemy are? We don't... And then we need to get ourselves organised rather than just all like running around like a school football game. Well, what... That's yes. stupid fear. No, true. We, we need to actually reform. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just said that. Yeah, I, I just wasn't listening to you, Nigel. Although the Persian troops are clearly running away, the lifelong friends continue squabbling like schoolchildren. They still can't decide if the enemy are coming or going. The centre of the map's got little blocks of red, and it's got most of the blocks of blue seem to be moving. Is that cavalry? Yeah, but which way are they moving? Are they, are they actually yeah. moving together? I think they're fleeing. I don't know how. I don't think they are. I think they are regrouping. OK, look, the thing is that, that we've got heavily, you know, well-trained battle experience uh, troops. Uh, are, they, are they fleeing or regrouping? They're regrouping. Do you know? We need to form a cohesive unit yeah, yeah, well, that if they regroup... We said that we five can... minutes ago and they didn't do anything about it. Well, we've been trying, I haven't know. we? yes, I know. A victory imminent. How on earth? A victory is imminent. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's down to the generals, yeah. I think. OK, well, OK. OK. Great, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Ray, Excellent. You are victorious. <laughs> you are victorious. I'll give up surgery and become a soldier, I think. <laughs> All right, John, Nigel. Congratulations, Mr General. Against overwhelming odds, the team have pulled off a famous victory by clever use of their cavalry and phalanx units. <laughs> It was obviously those tactics. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was, it was the, the well-thought battle plan. Yeah. But does this surprising win owe more to luck than judgment? I, I got a sense there that, that maybe the victory took you by surprise. I think we forgot that um, they had uh, mercenaries who obviously had no emotional stake in the battle. If the battle is going to be lost, they're going to be out of there. We also forgot that our troops, probably great strength is there, you know, battle hardened, they're very, very experienced. Yeah. John, why have they been like laughter when victory was announced? I felt that they were withdrawing in order just to basically regroup and then swamp us. You were just wrong. I was. Mm. All right, well, look, let's get the official verdict on that. <laughs> this is Mark and Alec have been watching everything you've been doing. Or is any winner win? Something is about to win victory, perhaps. <laughs> uh, Alec, what did you think? I was really gobsmacked by how well these guys did. They, uh... You met them beforehand, though. <laughs> well, no, they were given the task of trying to replicate one of the great achievements of Alexander the Great. They were put onto a field against a much larger army, and they were put into a battle which Alexander won by being a military genius. And it was, to some extent, an unfair task. I would have expected them to win with brute force. But no, they actually won with subtlety and cleverness and a lot of brute force. So I'm really impressed by these guys. How did you guys mean to use your cavalry and your infantry together? Bluff it. Cavalry to, cavalry to Blitzkrieg 
infantry to hold the line. Yeah. yeah. So you were going to fix them at the infantry and strike them with the cavalry. Yeah. yeah. Strike uh -huh. with the cavalry first, then follow that follow up with the infantry yeah. yeah. straight yeah. up. So you're seeking synergy between your cavalry and infantry. Yeah. 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 Now, had you achieved simultaneity, then you would t you too would be Alexander.